Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am Dr. Claudia Albers, Planet X research and professional physicist. And today I'd like to bring to you another one of my articles. This one is entitled, Can Planet X Cause Asteroid Type Impacts? Now, the Planet X system objects or stellar cores are able to hover close to the Sun's surface inside the inner corona for long periods of time and draw matter from the Sun through a connection which looks like a root. This type of connection is also in the shape of a vortex, and you can see it here, which indicates a weak gravitational attraction between the object and the Sun. And the fact that they are so close to the Sun when the connection is observed indicates that the attractive force is tidal in nature. But the lack of collisions indicates that they are at the same time also repelled by the Sun. The repelling force appears to be electric in nature and due to the fact that both the Sun and the objects have positively charged surfaces. And since the electric interactions causes two positive charges to repel, just like two north poles of a magnet repel, the two objects are repelled away from each other. So here we see one of the objects making a connection with the Sun. If we just had gravity as the interaction between the two, you'd expect the object to collide with the Sun. But this is not occurring, and the fact that it's not occurring shows that there is another force which is repelling the object away from the Sun acting on it. Now, the repelling effect between celestial objects is likely to extend to all objects that have a core in them, which is still generating energy through radioactive decay. As the gamma ray photons are released by the nuclei splitting into two, electrons belonging to neighboring atoms absorb the photons. This causes the electrons to leave the atoms they were in and move outwards toward the outer layers of the object. This leaves behind atoms with missing electrons and thus positively charged, so that a positively charged surface is created. Objects that do not have a core in which radioactive decay is taking place will not be able to generate a positively charged surface and an outer negative layer and will thus impact planets. Small asteroids and comets are not likely to have enough radioactive compounds in them to generate enough energy for such a process and will thus not be repelled by planets in this way and will therefore be able to impact the surface. Stellar core debris is therefore capable of impacting planets once it has gained enough energy to respond to gravity. This process, however, takes a long time, and the larger the debris piece, the longer this process will take. So here we see an asteroid coming in. An asteroid is made out of normal matter, and so it's not repelled by, uh, by the Earth. It's made out of normal matter, and it also does not have a positively charged surface, so it's not repelled. So it comes right in and impacts the surface. Now, stellar cores seem to be extremely depleted in radioactive compounds to decay, and therefore are not able to generate energy in their core. But since they have, over their lifetime, been able to create a positively charged surface as a result of this process, at the end of their lives they will still have a positively charged core, which is extremely deficient in electrons. So when they reach the electron's corona, they will powerfully draw in the sun's electrons. This withdrawal is likely to be so rapid that the sun's driving electric potential drops to the point that its atmosphere drops out of plasma arc mode and stops emitting light. This is what is observed during the so-called STO eclipse season. And you may look at article 232 entitled The Sun Can Go Dark the implications. The electrons gained by the stellar core, finding themselves in a much lower energy environment, will release large amounts of energy in the form of photons, which other particles making up the object will absorb. As the electrons lose gravitational energy, they will move inwards toward the object's core and the and be absorbed by atoms inside the core. So the object's initially gained outer layer of electrons disappears and it goes back to operating as a superion. 
And this is what is illustrated here. The sun is a normal celestial object, so it has a positive core and a negative outer layer. The stellar cores are depleted in energy and electrons, so they have a positive core and no negative outer layer. And it's the attraction between the positive core and the sun's negative outer layer that attracts them to the sun. And it's therefore the electric interaction that brings them to the sun. It's not gravity. They are, because of their extreme energy depletion, the, the gravitational interaction they are able to have with other objects is extremely small. They have to be very, very close to the sun in order to have any effect on it. In the meantime, the object starts to draw matter from the sun through the weak gravitational attraction it is able to exert on the sun's surface material. And because it is so energy depleted, energy is drawn from the sun to the point where the contact is made between the two. This matter becomes very hot and the local electric field becomes extremely intense, which may then give rise to solar flare or CME uh, type events at that spot which then causes matter emerging from the emitted photons to be repelled by the sun's corona. The stellar core will then be repelled as well and it will move out into space with the CME material. It will eventually be attracted back to the sun but in the meantime it is moving out through the solar system taking a lot of its shared debris with it. The large stellar cores will return to the sun. The smaller stellar cores will most likely be ejected further out and may reach some of the planets and may then interact with them and absorb energy from them. They will most likely eventually still end up returning to the sun as the sun will exert a much larger attractive force than any planet. The debris surrounding the stellar cores is spread throughout the solar system. This debris will eventually reach the planets and start interacting with them. The matter is energy and electron deficient, just like the stellar cores from which they came, and will thus start drawing matter and energy from the planets. This will cause the planets' atmospheres to heat up and their gravity to start dropping, which will in turn cause expansion and they break up of their surfaces. This is what is occurring on Earth, a stellar core matter in the form of dust and other large sized objects enter the atmosphere. This is leading to ever increasing fissuring of the surface and ever increasing volcanic activity. And you may look at article 282 entitled Earth in Upheaval, Magma Rising from Beneath. Now, large clumps of stellar core matter that are able to stay in one piece may eventually gain enough energy to start responding to gravity and may gain enough energy to melt and to self-gravitate into spherical objects. It should, however, take a very long time for this to occur, and those that may have by now gone through this process are most likely small. But they will then respond to gravity and may be drawn in by a planet. They will continue to absorb energy and thus spiral in until they have reached an equilibrium energy state with the planet, at which time they may have a stable orbit around the planet. And here we see one of the objects, uh, a, most likely a small stellar core that has reached the Earth. It is... Um, it did stay in the same position for a very long time. So uh, it seems to be actually very close to the Earth because it's very clearly seen. So most likely actually inside the atmosphere, you also see the spots around it, which is the matter that these objects eject or shed. Now this particular stellar core is uh, more likely to actually be a stellar core rather than debris because the debris will have to absorb a lot of energy before it can self-gravitate into a spherical object and this does look like a spherical object. And so, but once it, sell, it has absorbed enough energy to gravitate into a spherical object, it will be more responsible, more responsive to gravity, and it will behave more like a normal object. And this object did not behave like a normal object because it stayed in, in the same position for a long time. So this is the kind of behavior that you would expect out of the extremely energy depleted stellar cores. Now the smaller stellar cores, the ones that were once living moons, and uh, that's what that particular one was most likely, 
uh, which are ejected by the sun and come close to Earth may be attracted to Earth by the electric interaction. They will be attracted to the Earth's outer electron layer, just like they are to the sun's corona. These objects will most likely come into the Earth's atmosphere and interact with it in much the same way that stellar cores interact with the sun. So that heating of the atmosphere and radiation will be emitted. Electric discharging between the Earth's atmosphere and even the Earth's surface and the object is also likely to occur. The Earth is too small of an object to be able to have solar flare type events, but it will certainly move toward becoming more star-like than before, as its atmosphere becomes hotter and more energetic. And this is possibly what you may then see in the Earth's atmosphere if we had a small stellar core here uh, hovering over the surface of the Earth there might be this kind of electrical interaction looking like lightning. From the surface of the Earth clouds emitting radiation will form around incoming dust which are called luminescent clouds. These first appeared in 1850 in the upper atmosphere and were given the name noctilucent clouds. And you may look at Article 146 entitled Planet X System Time of Arrival for more details. The dust is likely to remain suspended in the atmosphere for a very long time until it eventually absorbs enough energy to be gravitationally attracted towards the surface of the Earth. Asteroid, uh, asteroid-sized stellar core debris will most likely stay in the atmosphere or even orbit the Earth inside the atmosphere at much slower speeds than would be expected, again because of the very low strength of the gravitational interaction between the stellar core matter, asteroid and the Earth. They are likely to also cause cloud formation and light emission like the dust. And here we see the noctilucent uh, clouds in the upper atmosphere. They are luminescent clouds. They emit light, which means that there has to be an, an energy transformation. In other words, electrons will absorb and lose energy, give off light, and therefore ionization and light emission must be involved in the creation of these clouds and therefore the matter that is leading to their formation must be energy depleted and therefore it is stellar matter. However, it is likely that with time some of the debris will absorb enough energy to start behaving more like normal asteroids, especially since this system started entering the solar system some 170 years ago and will thus impact the Earth like a normal asteroid would. It is also possible that with stellar cores moving at high speeds through the solar system that the orbit of asteroids within the asteroid belt is perturbed and that these natural solar system objects then impact the Earth. In conclusion, stellar cores ejected from the Sun may reach and interact the solar system planets but will most likely return to the Sun. Stellar core dust has been entering the Earth's atmosphere since 1850 and larger debris particles will most likely also enter and eventually reach the ground. Larger moon-sized debris may give rise to additional moons which will spiral inwards and eventually settle in a stable orbit around one of the planets. Larger sized stellar core debris pieces will take a very long time to absorb enough energy to the point that they will be able to impact a planet like a normal asteroid. But since the system has been here for some 170 years, asteroid type impacts become more probable as time goes by. This is Dr. Claudia Albers, Planet X physicist. Thank you for watching.